Hey guys, we're back here. Uh, we have our friend Julian from Ubisoft. Uh, we're going to be talking about The Division here in a second. I'm joined by James and our friend from GameSpot. Don't even turn me on. Hi, there you are. Go. Hi, Daniel Dwyer from GameSpot. Pleasure to be here. You guys are doing a great show this year. It's awesome. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, thank you, you YouTube, for having us. You guys are also doing a great show. Um, the other side. So I was very lucky uh, earlier this week I got to play The Division uh, yeah. with Jack Patillo, uh, who is not here. I also mispronounced his last name because it's hard to say. But uh, I had a great time with it. Um, and I believe we're going to be rolling some gameplay here in a second uh, of what we saw. But uh, I do have a lot of questions. And I'm, uh, I'm sure these guys do as well. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm here for that. Okay. So don't hesitate. <laughs> yeah. If I can't answer, don't take it personally. Okay. It's great. Thursday yeah. questions are the best questions because it means all the developers have had two nights of hard drinking yeah. behind them. Well, let so me tell you a story. Looser. Let me tell you a story. I'm the associate creative director. I wasn't meant to be here. <laughs> what? Okay. The game director, I won't name his name, right. had a little too much to drink last I night. I can't imagine it's too hard to look up what his name is. Shush. Okay. Let's not talk about that. Let's move on. Uh, very cool. So, uh... Very bare bones, for those who don't know. I mean, we, we've been hearing about The Division for about two years now. Yep. Uh, the game is finally on the cusp of a release date. I mean, we, we know what it, the release date is yes. now, right? Yeah. So we, it is hands-on. Like I said, I got to play it. For those who don't know, how would you define The Division to someone who's never played a video game before? Never played a video game before? Well, let, let's, let's assume they played <sighs> Minesweeper. It's a broad and, question. Okay, and okay. Blinks the Time well, Cat. All right. So have they, have they watched a movie before? They're blind in their left eye. All right, okay. So, I mean, the division, what we did was we imagined a New York City that's been ravaged by a virus, and society is starting to collapse, and we've gone past the point of no return, and you're embodying an agent of the division who has to go in there, regain control, and take back the city of New York for the forces of good, basically. So, in more gamer terms, it's... Massive open world, online, RPG. Yeah. Uh, now, now let's. Uh, now we're gonna start talking about it for someone who's actually. Let's say they completed Ocarina of Time. Okay. And then maybe I'm just doing a bad no, job here of improv. But, but I, I'm just curious because, like, what does that mean for the? I, I've seen so much of this game, but I'm still watching it, and I'm like, okay, but so are you just jumping in? to say the gameplay demo that we saw are you are, are you just being like hey meet me at this point and then that and you're meeting your friends there and from there you proceed with the objective or are you matchmaking into it or what so, is it so that's a great question i mean uh, the technical side of things is super seamless for the player what's going to happen let's take the island of manhattan so when when you kick off you'll be in a military base camp and this is the, basically the social area if you've played some other games that have released recently, that social Destiny. area. Destiny. Uh, no, no, not that one. Yes, that one. <laughs> so if you take that game, you spawn into this uh, social area, and you have all of these other players, all of these other division agents. And that's where you're going to form your, your squad. And the squad can be up to four people. So up to you can play every single mission, firefight, side quest, whatever, up to one, two, three, four players and we scale the difficulty so everything's very very smooth for everybody and when we you go into the dark zone and that's what we're showing today that's a strip of land in the middle of Manhattan that's being cordoned off and basically that's our our conceit to allow you to go to a PvP enabled area seamlessly so the matchmaking for that area is done behind the scenes uh, so you know there's one major hub, and there are lots of little safe houses that are social areas. So are you, like, physically walking out of that social hub into the open world yes. and finding... It's, uh, this stuff isn't instance necessarily? No. Yeah. This is one contiguous, massive open world. This is New York. You're just walking out into the street, and the squad that you're with, the fire team that you're with, squad is better, because fire team belongs <laughs> to somebody else. So, so uh, uh, speaking of the gameplay, though, and yes. the Dark Zone stuff you guys are showing out this year, we actually have some gameplay. We're going to okay. roll into that and talk a little bit about what we're going to be okay. seeing here. Okay, where are we watching the gameplay? Uh, they'll show up on monitors. All right. Yeah, so uh, this is actually, I think this is the demo uh, we got to play earlier this week. Um, for my for my experience, it felt very much like, um, I guess a more similar game would be something like Destiny. I played with two other characters. They had cooldowns. And then we just kind of randomly met up with some other players. Uh, there was a really interesting aspect, though, okay. about how you, you're not exactly calling it PvP, but how the PvP worked. Yeah. There is like a, uh, it's a very interesting, like, trader system, right? Yeah. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. D but before I go into that, just pointing out, this is, this is the seamless aspect. We're in Times Square in New York. There you see the gates to this dark zone. Now, the dark zone has been cordoned off, has been isolated. That was the epicenter of where the virus outbreak started. Now, it was isolated by the government, by the military, and they pulled out once it didn't work out, leaving all of this incredibly sophisticated equipment. And that's the reason you're going to want to go into the dark zone. But that's also the reason everybody else is going to want to go Th into the This is the dark where zone. everything started to click a little bit more when okay. you guys were describing the game because you started describing things like loot and items and uh, big. Uh, so like so now the the comparison to an RPG started to click. Got you. And now the different classes made sense because there was one character who had a turret, one was a healer, and one seemed to be like an all around sort of like hunter class. Is that sort of what you guys were going for? So, so that's super interesting because actually our game doesn't have classes. It's all in the selection of the equipment that you choose. So you know your your squad may be composed of somebody who's close to a close quarters combat guy, and maybe a girl who's doing uh, some uh, point man, light machine gun, and another guy who's doing long range sniping. It's up to you to select that with the weapons that you choose, the skills that you choose, the skills of these abilities uh, that you have, and uh, the gear that you choose. So it's very much classless, but it's up to you to find the synergies within your, your squad. Gotcha. That was pretty interesting because the yeah when we played the classes were basically kind of pre-built with the uh, the loadouts. I didn't realize you could actually no, no. select it yourself. This is this is what makes me angry about shows like E3 is that we're forced to do these quick gameplay demos that are super super intense and meant to leave you reeling. Ah, oh, so much action and so great. So we're taking shortcuts. We're, we're giving you classes as, as journalists when you come and play. But in the game, it's all about finding that equipment and then choosing your loadout. So it's, it's a lot more complex. It's a, it's a lot, more, uh, lot deeper as well. Is, is there any hope? So we've always seen people moving no. in squads. Is, no hope. Is there any there's no oh, hope. There's clearly no hope. Look, look at New no York. But you are the hope. As an well, agent, you are of, the hope. Is there any hope for me going out there Without two, two or three friends, yeah. can I can I just try and attack this game solo? Well, th this comes back to what you were saying. I mean, for me, I like to play the dark zone without a team. Go in there, sneak in, play it a little bit more cautiously, find that great loot, and we're we're about to see somebody uh, picking up this super sophisticated light machine gun. It's contaminated, so you need to extract that all by myself and not engage. You know, not take the risk of engaging because there is a risk reward to engaging anybody in the dark zone. So there's nothing stopping you from doing that by yourself. And in fact, want to play them by yourself and enjoy the narrative by yourself. That's not a problem either. Um, this, you know, open world action games, we're used to them being narrative driven experiences. And yes. It's very much an end goal that you're getting to. Um, uh, is that what you guys are trying to do with this or is this more like you know, games like Destiny, where this is a platform for which you'll be adding a bunch more content to over the next couple of years. So, so I think that the narrative side of things is maybe a third of the game. So you have this narrative that drives you through, that allows you to take back uh, New York to regain some sort of order. Then there's the end game content. We're not talking about it at E3. And then there's the, the PVP enabled space, which is the dark zone. Uh, and this is just a, a tiny sliver of that. So. You know, the narrative is a third of it. it. It's different from those other games. Yeah, you've, you've also been shopping it around for a while, and there's had a couple of delays, and like now we're going to get it in 2016, which is fantastic. I know people are very excited about that. What was the reasoning for those delays? Was it technical aspects of it? Was it just trying to feel out what the game was? It, it's, it's quality. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I love working for Ubisoft. I've been working for Ubisoft for 14 years now because we take the time to, to, to get out something that we're especially proud of. Uh, not everybody might agree with the content, but we're really proud of it. So we're not rushing this out. We're taking the time to, to do it right, to get something that we think is awesome. And, and that's something that I'm very much attached to as a developer. So it's called the Dark Zone, but there's a lot of Christmas lights on. What's that all about? So, so if I can avoid that question, <laughs> but aren't those Christmas lights pretty? <laughs> no, it looks great. It, right. it, the game itself graphically just looks stunning. Really and, stunning. And this is running on Xbox One. Obviously, this is the super multiplayer because it's uh, 
here we have in this small pocket, we've got, I think it's nine players or 12 players, uh, three or two teams, no, it's three or four teams of three agents. And it's, it's super, super pretty. I think that the engineers that we have uh, on working on the project are amongst the best engineers in the world. So I'm impressed every time I see it. Well, I mean, just from what we demoed, I was impressed. Just, uh, it, it is definitely one of the most ambitious games um, I've played, and especially from Ubisoft with what you guys have done in the past 14 years. Um, that, that challenge to blend single player and multiplayer, I imagine is one of the most, probably the most difficult things to do among. How many studios were working on this game? So, uh, the studios. We're at least four studios working on the content, and then there's a couple more studios working on stuff like playtests or testing the game. So the main studio is uh, Ubisoft Massive, based in Sweden. We're working with Red Storm uh, in uh, the US, uh, Reflections in England, and uh, Ubisoft NC in France. And then Bookrest is doing testing, France, Paris is doing some uh, play, play tests, so it's a worldwide effort. What, what is the magic hour that you guys have your conference call at? Is it like 3 a.m. in Beijing? Uh, it, it's a tricky one. I mean, this project isn't so bad, funnily enough, because most of the studios are in Europe, and we only have to juggle with uh, North Carolina. Uh, but I've worked on some projects where it was three continents, and the only time available for everybody was 7 in the morning or or 9 o'clock at night. And those make long days. And, and kind of like we were talking about earlier, so walk me through a little bit, like if when I boot this game up, I'm not going to see a menu that says single player, multiplayer, right? No, it's no, no. just the game. It's just the division. It's choose your agent, customize your agent, RPG. You want to stand out from everybody else. Uh, and welcome to New York. Is there actually a character creator or anything like that? Gotcha. Because when we played, we were uh, characters, obviously. Like you said, it's that vertical slice yeah. you have to give you. And I was like, oh, these are the characters who will have backstories. And uh, I'm assuming well, they do. But it's, uh, so you pick a male, female, and then you can design the look. In that's it. right. I, I, I don't think we're going to have backstories, but we're going to put you into a situation that defines who you are. So it'll be very clear to you who you are and what you belong to, which is the division. So you're an agent, you're activated, and you're part of the division, and taking back New York is gonna be your major objective. Gotcha, and right here in the gameplay, this is the yep. stuff I was talking about a little bit earlier uh, that really excited me, the fact that right now it seems like this is a PVE, but also a PVP type area where uh, you're being attacked by AI, but there are other players in the area, right? And you could choose to go against them or work with them, right? That's right. I, I mean, one of the things that we're the proudest about in uh, in the Dark Zone is this, this very atypical PvP. So you'll be meeting enemies. Uh, so these enemies that were showed uh, today were cleaners with big flamethrowers and Rikers inmates who escaped from Rikers Island. But you'll be also be coming across other agents. Now, if these other agents have picked up contaminated loot, they'll have a big yellow bag. It's a little bit of a gameplay construct, but it's gonna be a very obvious symbol that, okay, this guy, this girl is carrying something you, valuable. You want his, his or her stuff. You may want his or her stuff. And it may be you're in a situation where you have some, some really tough enemies and you need to collaborate with those, uh, those other agents. And there'll always be this temptation of, okay, what stuff does he really have? Is it worth the risk of gunning them down? And the risk is, if you do gun them down, if you manage to, uh, to get rid of them, you can pick up their loot, but you're flagged as a rogue agent. And that appears for everybody. You see the, the skull over his shoulder there? That is the rogue agent symbol. And that appears for everybody else in the dark zone. So you, you've just flagged yourself as, I am a bad guy, there is a bounty on my head. So everybody's gonna converge there and try and get rid of you. And getting rid of a rogue agent, no penalty. So you just get the loot. Well, so that, that's actually one of the things uh, with modern games, a, a trend I've been seeing with things like DayZ and other survival games is um, I hate humans. <laughs> I cannot stand people because all they want to do is ruin my fun. <laughs> um, I like the idea that you have added some sort of balance in there that we could just weed out the dickheads and get rewarded for it in some kind of way. We've done a lot of play tests and we find that people are usually playing on the, on the force of good. Being a rogue agent carries real uh, risk. 
So it's really that moment where you're trying to decide, okay, is this really worth it or not? And again, E3, we want an explosive demo, so it, it gets pretty hairy pretty quickly. But in the actual game, with much, uh, much more space in the dark zone, I don't think there are going to be that level of firefights. Okay. Yeah, just because the um, the gameplay session we went through, uh, like I said, we had a, one of our guys, Jack, from Achievement Hunter. Yeah. Uh, he immediately threw a bomb at my feet and <laughs> started off. And it was actually kind of cool because a lot of people were putting turrets down as sort of a, it was, it was a very much like a cold war of just okay. like, what do you got? What do you got? Like people aiming at each other, but they're sort of like, do we want to work together? Do we want to fight? And I like the idea that the turret wouldn't fire at the other team unless they went rogue. Exactly. And it's like, I, I imagine you guys encounter all sorts of interesting human behavior in your play tests. Yeah, yeah, and, and that sort of thing of preparing for bad, uh, for a bad situation is super, super cool. So the turrets are out, the seeker mine's out, you know, the guns are drawn, uh, the health is regenerated, everybody's ready, waiting for this extraction, and you know that things can go bad. Very cool. Well, Julian, thank you so much for stopping thank by. Thank you.